events, but it's all one big event. No, I agree with you. And that's the crazy thing because you see it die down a little bit. So it kind of dies down Monday, Tuesday, and then before the big race on Thursday, people start coming back in on Wednesday. Or I'm sorry, the big race on Friday. And um, people start coming back in Wednesday, Thursday for like a long weekend type thing. So it's really, really cool. Um, I did the smart thing this year and rented a house about 15 minutes. I could leave my door and be right at the gate of Hammertown in 15 minutes, which some people are like, oh, you got to leave and come back. But waking up and not having dust or dirt in every part of your body and being able to take, you know, longer than a five minute shower is something that I will gladly drive into Hammertown. Yeah, you know, and I I did the same thing this year. My house was uh, it was a little bit closer. I think it was probably twelve ish minutes from Hammertown. It wasn't bad, but I gotta say, like I I'm kind of sold on that whole situation. Like I hate to say it because a lot of people be like, "Oh, that's sacrilegious. You got to camp." I've been out there, and you know, it, I don't know. I, I'm kind of feeling the house thing. You know, I was there most nights till like nine or ten o'clock, and then. Uh, you know, and then you just drive to the house, and yeah, I, I don't know. And by UTV, we could be to camera town in five minutes. No, exactly. And, you know, and there was different ways to take in, and, like, you can take in Ghost Road from different areas, um, different routes to go in. Obviously, we all find, find our little, like, sidetrack routes, but that's, like, honestly the best thing because, like you said, it, it depends on how people are like, oh, you need to camp there. Until I told everybody when the wind was going, you know, 40 plus miles per hour for three, four days. And everybody's like, I just want the wind to stop. And I'm like, I have a house and it's beautiful. Yeah. You know, I got to say, this, this was actually the first year that uh, I went out there and I've spectated before things like that. But I really like got into the rocks. And I got to tell you, that place is just insane. And especially on race day to actually hike into some canyons and stuff like that, like, I got to tell you, that race, I feel like it lends itself, like, the deeper you want to go into things, the more exciting it gets. You know what I mean? Like, you can sit in Hammertown, you can watch the Jumbotron, and it's not bad, but, ah, let me tell you, you get out into the rocks and you really start hiking into some canyons, man, you get to see some rad, rad stuff, Tiff. No, and that's that's the cool thing that, like, I saw from it all, like you were saying, just being able to hike in, being able to see all those like different random spots. And, you know, we, we always talk about being able to have the best seat in the house. Sometimes, you know, when we are announcing, cause we get to see everything happen right there, right in front of us. We don't miss the camera view, but being able to be in it and like really engulf yourself in it is, is kind of cool, you know, especially because like we were just saying, you know, the deeper that you get in the cooler things that you get to see. Yeah. I will say, you know, I, I spent some time during the UTV race, the first lap, and I watched pretty much everybody come through backdoor their first time. And, you know, backdoor is infamous, right? But I got to tell you, is I feel kind of bad for a lot of the UTV racers, especially the, like, top couple. Like, you get in there, one, you don't know what to expect. Two, there's so ridiculous many people there. And like, you know, that's like, you got to kind of nut up when you go down that, uh, go down back door. And like, I feel bad because like, I don't, you know, if you put it on on its lid, like, I don't think anybody blames you because like, it's kind of a bit of a Russian roulette there, but like, that's gotta be intense for a driver to show up to back door. You got, you got 10,000 people lining the walls of this Canyon and now you've got to send it off a 10 foot cliff, you know, and it's like kind of hope for the best. And it's like, it's gotta be a little bit nerve wracking as a driver because there's a really good chance you're going to put it on its roof. And, uh, you know, you got all these people watching and you know, they've all got their cameras rolling and you're going to be an instant internet famous, you know? No, I, I agree with that. And then, um, you you've been there many many years before this year they it's like the unofficial backdoor challenge you know and then like the craziest thing is is you didn't go this year i tried to but just the days you know kind of get away from you and then kind of when you get back to the house you're like ah do i really want to head back out but um the day that they did the backdoor challenge or the unofficial backdoor challenge like i heard that it was like it used to be in the beginning of like the race days where everybody was just lining up, everybody was just trying to watch and it was just really cool. So, you know, like even on like the back or the unofficial backdoor challenge, that's even going to be crazy because you have so many people down there just trying to like, you know, get you to go through it. And then obviously everybody heckles everybody and it's kind of like, you know, a part of 
what King of the Hammers is, especially like at Chocolate Thunder and Backdoor. Those are so, you know, infamous for so many different hecklers. Like this one crazy one that I saw, this guy was, we were at Chocolate Thunder and the race line, if you're looking at the mountain, the race line used to be on the left. Well, the race line got completely messed up. So, you know, the buggy Jeep line is on the right. Well, I guess somebody had broke down, which, you know, is just like how it always happens. And I have video of this and this buggy or this, you know, Jeep guy, um, he tried to go up and around, but obviously the rocks are slippery. So his top of the vehicle in front of it slipped and fell on top of the Jeep. And the guy was underneath fixing his drive shaft as it happened. And all you do is you see this guy come out and he's like, what's going on? And it's just crazy. It's just crazy to see all the things that come out from King of the Hammers. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, you know, a lot of listeners call it a bucket list. We've got people on the internet. It's a bucket list event. Like it's, yeah, you, you just have to go out there and experience it. It's, it's crazy. It's gnarly. You're dirty. You're tired. You're probably hung over at the end of the whole thing, but it's like, it's such an awesome, awesome experience. You know, it's one of those where, you know, it, it's not one of those sexy events like the Long Beach Grand Prix where you go and like there's uh, all kinds of amenities and, you know, it's clean and you're in a suite and it's like fun to watch all these million dollar cars. Like it's the total anti Long Beach Grand Prix, but it's so much fun to go and be involved in an event like that because there's really, you know, there, there's really it's one of a kind. There's nothing else on the planet like King of the Hammers. And I think that's what kind of makes this whole thing so special. Yeah, and you know we've all said it before, and we've all talked about it. The burning, ra- the burning man of off road, and and different things like that. And you know it's it's really cool, and you never know it. And Dave Cole and all of Hammer King Productions, they've done a really really great job. Uh, the uh, Holly EFI Shootout used to be right behind Hammertown Heights. Now they moved it this year to a little right of back door, and it was just really cool. And you know, when we were driving up from Hammertown, and we've said this before, there's nobody there. You know, there's nobody there. It's in the middle of the desert. But for 12 days out of the year, there's now probably 75,000 plus people there. But it was really cool driving from Hammertown and driving all the way up, you know, through the lake bed up towards Chocolate Thunder. And they had a big jumbotron there like they normally do. And it was it was literally like a drive-in movie. Everybody pulled up. Um, it was really kind of cold and windy that day as well. So people pulled up. We, some were still in their vehicles. Some were on top of their vehicles. There's little bonfires being made all around, bonfires being made up on top of the mountain. And it was just really cool to be a part of something like that. And I'm just very fortunate. You're very fortunate. Both of us are very lucky that we get to work it as well as attend the event. Oh, for sure. You know, and it's like sometimes I look and I go, I'm I'm being paid to be here. Like, what? How, how does this work? I, I feel that way about Cranon every year, too. I'm like, what? They're paying me to be here? Like, don't I have the luckiest job in the entire world right now? You know, uh, I definitely get that feeling about KOH. I do want to circle back on KOH. We've got a lot more to talk about, Tiff, but we're going to take a short commercial break. And we return more with Tiffany Stone and myself here on the Gentle Tire Down and Dirty Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Conditions off the pavement are always changing, so why settle for a light bar that just turns on and off? The Rigid Adapt is a revolutionary new light bar that will automatically select from eight beam patterns that range from a widespread 90-degree flood to a 15-degree spot based on your vehicle speed. Try that with your knockoff light bar. A dash-mounted controller allows the user to toggle between adaptive mode beam patterns, and RGBW accent lighting. With Adapt, it's easier than ever to own the night. Don't just shred your way through any off-road rugged terrain. Get into gear with GSP XTV and let us redefine your adventure. The GSP advantage of quality and performance sets the standard for UTV axles. We strive to provide premium ATV and UTV axles to keep you shreddy ready. Kick up some dirt and get in the driver's seat with GSP XTV. With over 35 years of experience, drive with a company you can trust. Drive with GSP. For more information, please visit us at gspxtv.com today. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Available live online, in syndication on networks across the U.S. And available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back to the General Tire Down and Dirty Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver, Tiffany Stone here. Been talking some King of the Hammers. We're going to switch gears here in a minute, talk some uh, auto show, some Mint 400. Before we get to that, though, Tiff, I was listening back. We just dropped our King of the Hammers podcast that you and I did. 
We had uh, Sarah Price and Amy Quintero. We had the Matlocks, Wayne and Kristen. And then we had Brett Carpenter and Seth Quintero ended up popping in uh, from Polaris Razor. But I listened back, and it's like an hour and a half show. And it's one of those where you and I, like, we get into a groove and we start talking with people, and then you lose track of time. But I started listening back to the conversations we had. That had to have been, I would say, that show and the one we did at SEMA where you and me and Keegan Kincaid, we had Sam from Car Throttle and Rob Mack. Those have to be two of my favorite shows I think I've done in a very, very long time. And the one out at KOH, like, to hear Amy Quintero, you know, the the sandwich mom and, you know, the team mom, now all of a sudden she's sh- sitting shotgun with Sarah Price and, uh, you know, and, like, I, I don't know, the Matlocks and this, you know, this power couple who are just killing it in UTV is like, I don't know, that, that show, Tiff, and I think you and I both left it and went, man, that was a good show. And now listening back, like, it doesn't disappoint. No, I, I – I... 100% agree with you. Um, I've actually never actually had the chance to talk to the Matlock. So talking to Kristen and Wayne Matlock, they're a great couple. Um, I've even told her like off air, you know, through comments, through DMs and stuff. I was like, I really am glad that I got to meet you. She's just a really good, inspiring person um, overall. She really puts forth a lot of the stuff, not only for her program, for her husband, but them as a team dynamic. And just hearing them, you know, she wants to win just as bad, and she's won overall in, in an N.A. compared to, to some of the guys in the Turbo. So it's just really cool to see her do that. And the dynamics that her and her husband have together, it's a very playful one. You can see that they really push each other and they want the best for each other, all while still wanting to be on top of the box. So it, it's really cool. I'm glad to, you know I got a chance to meet them. And then, you know, Seth, of course, wants to reiterate how old I am all the time. Oh, and you. Seth wants to deny my um, proposals to prom since he found out how old I was. And he's like, man, you're old. And I was like, excuse me, Seth? He's like, to me, seriously. He's like, but maybe, but maybe. And I'm like, I mean, I, I technically, I guess I could be Seth's mom, to be honest. Like, I could have had Seth in high school and he could be my child. So <laughs> there we go. Don't age yourself, T-Stone. I, I can't remember if it was Brett Carpenter. Somebody said on air, they're like, yeah, he's going to regret turning you down someday. Uh, <laughs> he might. He might. You yeah. never know. You yeah. never know. When I get inducted into the Off-Road Hall of Fame, Seth's going to be like, man, that one time I had a chance to take T-Stone to prom and I told her no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, one takeaway from that before we switch gears, though, not that particular part, but you were talking about the Matlocks, and you're talking about Kristen, and I think one thing that I absolutely love about Kristen Matlock um, is that she was that woman that was out there supporting her husband, and he was racing quads, things like that, you know, and it was like, well, why am I Why am I not racing? I can do this too. And it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, girls can do this too. Kristen, like, started racing, and now she's killing it, like literally killing it. Got a factory razor contract to race, you know, but – like, I think, like, one thing I love about Kristen Matlock is it's a case in point. Like, we've got a lot of female listeners to this show. Part of it is, you know, because you come on the show and we have a lot of, uh, you know, killer female athletes on here that are shredding it. But, you know, with Kristen, it was, you know, she, you know, it was one of those I can do it too. And I encourage women, and I think she's case in point. Look at Kristen Matlock. Like, if there's any women that, whether it be just go out on a razor on a weekend or on a dirt bike or, uh, you know, get into jeeping like you are. Like, I think she's case in point. See what she did. And, like, if there's any women out there literally teetering on the edge, like, oh, I'd like to try this. I'm a little nervous. Just do it. Yeah. I mean, you're going to be more mad at yourself later on in life, you know. Like, I, I do the same thing. And don't get me wrong. I probably have tons of people out there who have discredit the hard work or discredit and be like, well, she doesn't really build her Jeep. She doesn't really do this. I do have a hand in building in my Jeep. Do I own a shop? No. When I go into other people's shops, do I use all their tools? No, you know, I pay them, I ask them for help. But what people don't realize, you know, as, as much as that, when you're like, oh man, I don't know what to do. You are literally trusting people with your life too. When they build your Jeep or build your UTV or build your trophy truck, truck they are building it for you. So in return, they are trying to do everything to make you safe too. And just listening to somebody like Kristen, like I said, you know, she doesn't play necessarily the female role. And I, and I love that because I don't necessarily like playing the female role either. Cause as soon as you are behind a steering wheel, locked in, harnessed in, helmet on everything, 
that vehicle has no idea what you are, if you're a man or if you're a woman, old, young, what race, anything. And that's what I love so much about motorsports and off-road is because it takes that all away. 